the back strap and the tenderloin to thaw it out. Drain the water. Wash my hands. That bag I had said tenders, but this look like backstrap. Yeah, this butterfly backstrap. Oh, I got some. Got a few pieces of tenders in there. That'll work. Had I known I'd put tenders in there, also, I would have only taken out uh, two bags of. Backstrap cutlets. But anyway, it's going to get eaten. It just means more that I can. Um, to a gravy or fry. So this hasn't been marinated in anything. Um, just cut up packaged. I'm just gonna give it another wash and off. These look pretty, don't they? Paper towel, I'll try to get, get it pretty dry so I can put the seasoning on it. Trying to pat it. 
dry and get some of the water off of it. And I go ahead and add my seasoning. I'm gonna do black pepper, garlic, onion powder, and my favorite, Tony Saturday. I'm gonna start off with the onion powder. Put a liberal amount of seasoning on my food. I like to taste my seasoning. Just repeat it to the other side. Just want to add while you're cooking this back strap. You don't want to overcook it, but um, you don't want to undercook it neither. I'm not one of those medium rare guys or um, rare steak eating guys. I like my food well cooked. So, with that being said, it will be done. I don't like any blood running in my food. That's not me. You can keep a raw steak. I don't care how good they say it tastes. It's just not my cup of tea. These last three strips are tenderloins. All right, got all the meat seasoning. Stick around. And now um, we'll go through the next phase of it. All right, got my hot water going. Let's clean off the countertops. Where all the seasoning was. sink area with some Lysol. My wife will have a fit if I don't clean up the sink. white
clean off my canisters with. When you're touching raw meat, you don't want to contaminate the, your stuff. All of this is clean now. We'll put it back in its place. Now, I got my flour in the bag. I was looking for my corn starch, but I couldn't I think I used it all. Wash your hands off. Put the corn white. shake it up. I always like to use a Ziploc bag. Shake it around, get everything coated pretty good. Got a brown paper bag, that's what I'll be using. Old school way. We need to hang out with the old head under the tree and we're cooking that fish with a brown paper bag. You don't have to worry about cleaning up too much afterwards because it was outside. Whatever season it hit the ground, it just hit the ground. Smelling good. Smelling good. What's that video has smell of vision. You can smell those spices working together. Put your enough flour in the bag to where you can kind of coat everything at one time. But not least, got three strips of tenderloin. Fish tenders, depending on what part of the country you're in. We got the tenderloin out of the deer.
All right, got my grease. I think it's up the tip. I took it off because I was over here seasoning the meat. And I can kind of smell it. So I took it off the fire. I have a grease thermometer. I just go on the field. There we go. We won't let that stay in too long, so I'm gonna get my pan ready. Oh, I Looking good. Cast iron, Dutch oven, and it never try cooking in cast iron. You need to try that. Make the food taste hundred percent better. It is healthier for you too. Help build up the iron in the blood. About where you want it, people. You don't want to overcook it. Staying on the long ones a little bit thicker. Going on a piece of tenderloin, and I can tell you right now, I prefer the back strap over the tenderloin. I know a lot of people might disagree, but the back strap to me is a little bit more tender 
than the actual tenderloin. So just want to put that out there. Just finish frying up a piece of tenderloin and um, backspace it both. And to me, the backstrap a little bit more better to me. Now in the back, I got a pot of hot water brewing, and that's going to be for my out of horn sour cream and chives, instant potatoes, to go with the backstrap. Got the water boiling. Now I'm going to add in my mash, my instant mash, and I can cut the fire off from there. See, it doesn't take long. So I was doing potatoes, regular potatoes. Yeah, depends. Sometimes I leave, wash them up real good, leave the skin on. Sometimes I peel the skin off. But with these here, it's much quicker. I don't have the time today to. regular homemade mask. This was the Idaho and um, sour cream and chive. So that's a done deal there. Get these back straps over a second. Cut up a little red onion. So I want to get ready to make the gravy. I don't have it already cut up. You can use white onion, yellow onion, whatever you prefer. I have red onion on hand because I use it in my salads a lot when I make them. I just love the way onion tastes. Doesn't have to be perfect. All it is is flavoring to the seasoning, to the um, the gravy. To this the same, the same flour that I use to season this with is what I'm going to use to thicken it with. already thickened tremendously so I'm gonna add a little bit more water to it to loosen that thickness up. So that's all it is to making a good gravy. You use the the crumbs from whatever you were cooking. You pour some of the grease out. 
And you start off with your cup of water, depending on how much dripping you leave in there. See right now, it's just about about a good 30 weight right there. In the beginning, I would say a good 40 weight gravy. Let me add just a little bit more water to it. Let me get me another spoon. My spoon is there. <laughs> Stand up till I get you out of there. There she go. Start adding in a piece, a few pieces of that strap. In the loins, I had the last two pieces I had. That's why you don't want to overcook your any meat for that sake. Because if you're going to do a gravy, you're going to have to put it back in there and let it cook down. So. That's one of the reasons why you don't want to overcook it. So I put about half in here. And now just a little bit more water to it. And I'm going to let that let that simmer. But hey, that's that's how my mom taught me how to make gravy. And um, it's been spot on ever since. If, if it's messed up, it's because I messed it up. My mom was a cook for I don't know how many years. I know I was a kid and she was always a cook. And when I was in high school, she was a cook. So uh, every now and then when I get stuck, I call her up and Ask her how to make this or make that. And uh, you know, that's a blessing to have that privilege to be able to call your mother. A lot of people take for granted. But um, hey, they're not always going to be here with us. The same as us. We're not going to always be here with our kids. So hey, don't take that for granted. Don't take it lightly. But I got those. Uh, about half, back strap, half of the back strap in gravy. The other half, I didn't do a gravy to them. I just left them fried. And uh, <clears throat> that's how you do it. It's pretty simple. So, um, hey, stick around for the plate presentation. I'm going to let those simmer for about 10, 15 minutes maybe. And then I'll get back with you guys. It's time for the plate presentation, baby. Everything is done. Your 30 weight with mash.
Oh, you done found it on the TV? Well, there we go, people. Plate presentation. A little parsley on top. A little mash. And their backstrap cutlets. I want to thank you guys for tuning in on today's episode of Chasing Tales, where we showed you how to prepare a succulent meal out of backstrap, venison backstraps, tenderloin cutlets. I'm your boy, Mr. Knock One Down. Peace. God bless. We'll see you later on the next episode. Mm-mm, good. Mm-mm, good. Doesn't get any better than this, people. Hey, guys. I got a little knock one down Junior in the picture. Can you believe he out for microwave popcorn over venison backstrap cutlets and mashed potatoes and gravy? Yep, he did. But that's all right. It's more for me. Mmm. So good. My son Blake done went and put me on the big screen. Cash down, Dutch oven back cleaned out. I'm gonna add a coat of oil to it. That's how you take care of a cast iron skillet or Dutch oven. You clean it out. Um, once it cools down, or once you get everything out of it, wash it up, and then you take a little olive oil or corn oil. Whatever all, and pour a little bit into the paper towel, wipe the inside down.